Here we have the 1993 Kona Fire Mountain of Mitch Coulter, or possibly better known as Mitchy Dagger on Instagram. Now, while Mitch's Instagram is mostly an outlet to share graphic design work, on the odd occasion, a quick small glimpse of this fire mountain pops up in posted stories. It always catches my eye, always leaving me kind of wanting to see more of the thing. So I asked him, can I make a video about this thing? It looks sweet. And he replied later on in the conversation, are you, are you sure you want this bike? It's got a lot of not cool stuff on it. Let me be clear here for everyone. Traditionally recognizable expensive parts do not always equate to cool. If they did, everyone would think Love Forks and Canyon Grail hover bars were cool. They're not. That said, let's talk about this drop bar Kona Fire Mountain some more. So this project started from the sticker design that you see here. The Legends Never Die design prompted an Instagram follower of Mitch's to offer up the Kona Fire Mountain frame set for free to see it get built up and never die. Following a philosophy that I've managed to scrape by my entire life with relatively unscathed, Mitch employed the help of tech-hungry mountain bikers hunting for the latest and greatest, acquiring their rideable condition takeoff parts, assembling this impressive 1x10 drivetrain for impressively low dollars. A Dior XT crankset with a $12, 38 tooth narrow wide chainring, shifting through a Dior M615 clutch derailleur over an off-brand 11 through to 40 cassette, all actuated by a micro shift Dynasis bar end shifter. That's right bar end shifter. This thing is converted to drop bar, but not in the ridiculous and absurd fashion that I continuously find myself doing, you know, constantly obsessing over having to have like road shifters and then being stuck having to spend money on a matching derailleur to work with it, you know, just golden handcuffs. There's a better way, the bar end shifter way. It's as easy and painless as bolting on your drop bar of choice. In Mitch's case, this set of specialized hover bars, acquiring some painlessly inexpensive brake levers from Tektro and simply matching them with the easiest of tuning and powerful Shimano Alivio V brakes. And boom, you got yourself unlimited drivetrain options and better brakes than 69% of the bikes on the road. Wheels in this Kona's case also joined the party as a secondhand addition in the form of Welta Airline 3s. 36 spokes of bomb-proof goodness. Wrapped up in La Pièce du Résistance, Simworks by Panaracer Homage Tires. 26 by 1.95 inches of green tread and tan wall goodness. I don't think I can stress enough the importance of tire choice on any build. I feel like it's often overlooked, but tires seriously determine the tone of a completed look. The homage is totally my flavor, to the surprise of no one. I'm not a hipster, you're a hipster. Mitch finished off the build list sheet by describing the finished project as a budget build by most standards. Almost as a way to downplay the finished product that I'm so fond of. I know honestly, I find myself doing the same thing about things that I build, but there's an inherent flaw in downplaying the ability to put something together that's awesome and cool outside of just using money. It devalues the creativity and the problem-solving hustle used to make it happen instead. This bike was built using art to get a frame, parts hunting to make sure that you can get things for a good cost, and the fine operational knowledge of compatibility between components so that you can make sure it all works. Not everyone can do that, and that's why it's cool. 